Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Project E. This is episode 2, so if you guys haven't seen episode 1, definitely go back and watch it. And that way you guys could actually be cleared off with a bit of missing information as to what this series is all about. However, as a quick recap, this particular series was designed as a way to improve my game, to save myself financially, and also to reduce the amount of clutter and increase space around my room. So it is overall an accumulation of all of these factors that make Project E what it is. So the basic idea is by reducing the amount of decks that I have, which by the way, I do have about 90 different decks, I figure I could actually get rid of some and that way I wouldn't be spending as much money on cards and that would be a lot better because that way I could focus more of them onto the main decks that I actually want to build and want to continue focusing on and at the same time it also allows me to also spend more time actually practicing using my current decks or the decks that I really want to use as opposed to running around just going between 90 different decks. And of course the space is just a huge clutter, a huge mess, and I get lost sometimes actually looking for my own cards. I can't actually find some cards to actually do my deck profiles because I might have misplaced them all over the place. So because of that I wanted to actually keep things a bit on the neater side and as a result I just wanted to get rid of decks. So over the course of Project E I have intentions to decrease the amount of decks I actually own in my collection from 90 plus decks hopefully down to maybe 30 plus decks and that would be a really significant change a significant difference and that would be quite fantastic now given these are not necessarily 90 plus decks that i have it's more so 90 plus cores meaning some of these decks i've never actually played before it's just so that i have the core itself and i'm simply just building them up on the way and some of them were never even complete and i figured I'm never going to end up completing these, I may as well just give up on them. So that was the case for uh, actually the previous episode where I went over just a few decks. Several of them actually included Dream Mirrors, Assault Mode and Fortune Ladies and those were decks or more so cores that I never completed so I could never actually play with those decks. Now given I have played with the deck technically on YGO Pro, Dueling Nexus, on Edo Pro, on uh, dueling book. I've done playtesting plenty of times online. However, in terms of the real life decks, I have not done any kind of testing whatsoever. And as a result, I just decided to give up on those decks. You know, there's no point in me actually building them. I tried playing them online and they just didn't work for me. If you guys want to know the reasons as to why I'm choosing to give up on them, definitely head back down to episode one and go through that entire video. It's not too long. But of course, now we're here in episode two. So you guys must be wondering what decks have I actually decided to get rid of this time or what cores did I decide to get rid of this time? Well, let's actually begin here with Gladiator Beasts. So Gladiator Beasts were a deck that actually got revamped in Chaos Impact and during that time I was really excited to actually get all the cards to rebuild the deck and that would have been really fun because GX was one of my most favorite errors and Gladiator Beasts came out in Gladiator's Assault which was a set that came out during the GX era. I really did enjoy Gladiator Beasts while playing with them, but I just realized that it was becoming more and more difficult to actually get the cards I needed to build an actual real life deck. So because of that, I pretty much just got rid of my core. I mean, it wasn't too many cards, but it was adding to the clutter. It was adding to the mess of cards that I actually had. And I knew that I would never actually finish building that deck at all. So I've given up officially on Gladiator Beast. So we're going to add that to the list. And really the only reason I got into it was more so nostalgia and the fact that it was a deck from the GX era and that's pretty much it. But the deck doesn't really perform on a kind of play style that suits me as a duelist. And that's pretty much going to be the common theme with all of these decks that I'm getting rid of as well because these decks I want to actually own decks that represent me as a duelist and if they don't then I don't really have any more intention actually continuing 
uh, to keep these decks or to even build up on these cores. So the next core that I've actually decided to get rid of is actually Trickstars. Trickstars came out in Code of the Dollar, so very recent, but of course during that time it was definitely very expensive. So it did delay my time in actually trying to accumulate all the cards. Reincarnation was expensive, even Candina was considered expensive at the time, and also the field spell as well. So because of that, I just pretty much built the deck on YGO Pro during that time and I was just playing it all online. And throughout time as I was trying to accumulate the cards I needed for the deck, it was just becoming harder and harder. I wanted to actually build an OG deck where uh, I got everything from the first ed uh, Code of the Duela stuff and pretty much every set that they were introduced in the new cards at least. And it was just getting more and more hard and I didn't want to just buy a core of someone, not that I could actually find one anyway. Eventually I just decided, you know what, I'm going to give up. Trick stars aren't really my thing anyway, I wasn't really a big fan of burn decks to begin with, so why would I actually want to build a deck that focuses on that? I mean, sure, it's one of those typical waifu decks that's maybe played by one of your favorite characters, but it doesn't really do anything else. It doesn't represent me as a duelist, and as a result, I decided to just give up on them. The next deck we have here is Tenyi. Tenyi was a deck that didn't come out too long ago. I think they were introduced in Rising Rampage and they were meant to be a, a more of a supporter kind of archetype. And for me, I just didn't really feel much again to the pure deck of it. Like I prefer to build pure decks. It's just something that I find to be more fun. And yeah, it's just more wholesome. But to use them as supporters, I might be willing to but overall it's not like an immediate thing I need to do so 10 year was something that although I accumulated a few cards I figured there was no reason for me to really keep them unless I was building a really specific kind of deck that needed their support so again it's one of those decks where I've just decided to give up on building a pure version of that particular deck and just by getting rid of even a few cards it really helps declutter the mess that I actually have. Moving on here, we have Abyss Actors. Abyss Actors was a deck that actually came out long time ago back in Destiny Soldiers. You guys actually might have remembered, for all of you guys who have actually been subscribed on this channel for a very long time, I opened up three boxes of Destiny Soldiers and you guys all saw me pull all my cards. I got all the Dark Lords I needed to build my deck. I got all the Abyss Actors. I even got all of the Destiny Heroes as well however eventually i did get rid of the destiny heroes which at this point i am rebuilding them but with the abyss actors i just never really took off with them in fact the deck never really took off to begin with anyway it was always on the side it was one of those pendulum decks that just couldn't live up to the pendulum magicians and as a result it just kind of fell out of interest for me i just lost interest in the deck i had no desire anymore to play the deck and i decided you know what let's just get rid of it so i ended up getting rid of it and uh, yeah soon after there were a few more support that actually came out but it just didn't really make up for the deck's lack of i don't know i guess integration into the game itself i mean it barely competes as even a casual deck itself so yeah, it was just something that, again, wasn't a representation of who I was as a duelist, and it also just didn't excite me anymore. Moving on to the fifth archetype we're getting rid of is going to be Time Thief. Time Thief is pretty much more of a supporter type of archetype. It's a archetype that's used for more so combo decks, but at the same time, you could technically still build a deck out of Time Thieves alone, and you still could technically call a deck a Time Thief deck. But the thing is this, even with the new support that's actually coming out, the deck doesn't necessarily have any uh, specific playstyle. They just do a really simple thing where you can special summon out more and you go for your XE summons. And I just felt that it was a bit too bland for me and it was just not fun. Maybe you could make it into some kind of combo deck, but 
I could easily just do that with DDDs, you know, I could easily just do that with maybe even Cosmos. Uh, a lot of pure decks have their own variation of combos that are far more fun than Time Thieves actually being a supporter archetype. So with the core that I actually had, I decided to just get rid of them. Alright, so next here we're going to be getting rid of Witchcrafters. Witchcrafters were a deck that I was actually keen on actually building as a pure variant. Mostly I do see people using them as an engine more so than an actual deck itself because uh, one of my mates actually does play Witchcrafters but he does mix it in with other different archetypes to combine it into one big combo deck. Whereas for me, I actually want to build a pure version. But after so long now of actually just trying to accumulate the cards, I just realized it was getting too hard to actually accumulate them. And it was kind of a deck that operated mostly in the hand anyway, with the majority being spells. And it was just an overwhelming weakness that could be stopped if someone knew how to side deck. And because of that, I felt that there wasn't really any point in me even trying to actually build it. I mean, I did play it on YGO Pro, uh, back when YGO Pro still existed, but even so, it wasn't a deck that really took off with me. Uh, yeah, you could say it's a waifu deck, but again, it's there are different options out there, and I'd much rather choose those. And these over here, the Witchcrafters, they just didn't do it for me. Moving on here, we have the Unchained. The Unchained was similar to the Tenyi in the sense that they were also an archetype that was relatively small and worked more as a supporting archetype. So for me, I'm really just trying to stop building the actual pure version of Unchained. Not to say that you could actually build uh, much of a deck anyway because the main deck doesn't really have many cards. So you're going to have to put in a lot of different engines into the deck. So because of that, I'm also giving up on Unchained because of the fact that it's just pointless. So all of the spells and traps, I pretty much just got rid of them and I decided, you know what, if I'm going to play Unchained, I'm really just going to use it as a supporting archetype. For example, Abomination is a great extra deck card, but aside from that, as a pure deck, I'm just not going for it. Next, of course, we have Plunders. Plunders came out back in Ignition Assault a very long time ago, but the sad thing is I never actually got into Ignition Assault. In fact, I stopped buying uh, booster boxes after Chaos Impact, so I missed out on Ignition Assault, I missed out on Eternity Code, I missed out on Rise of the Duelist. I was lucky enough to actually get Phantom Rage, but even so, I had missed three different sets and I can't find them anymore in the stores. So there's no way I could actually get the majority of the cards to actually even start building these decks. I do have some of them, but I don't have a lot of them and I'm not going to go online just to buy singles to build these decks because it seems pointless, you know, that's where it's becoming more of an expenditure where I actually have to purposely spend money directly to build those specific decks. I gave them a go on YGO Pro, on Edo Pro and they just didn't do it for me. They didn't represent who I was as a duelist and they were a type of archetype that the gameplay wasn't necessarily my thing, like I could understand where the fun could come from but aside from that I have so many other decks that I would much rather prefer playing. Moving on we also have Nemesis. Nemesis was a deck that was quite fun, you know, I did test it out but again it's a really small archetype and you really can't get things going and it was just something that was introduced quite later on, I think somewhere in Eternity Code as well or it might have been in Rise of the Doorless, but it was just not that deck that was something that really pulled me in. So because of that, it's again another archetype that I'm deciding to also just get rid of completely and pretty much give up on. Next here we have Subterrors, pure Subterrors that is. Pure Subterrors were a deck that I've actually uh, had in mind to build for a very long time because there was actually Subterror Shadows, there was Subterra Prediction Princesses, and I was actually like keen on building them. In fact, I've played them all online, all these different variants, and I was hoping to eventually just get all the cards for the Subterras, but you know, Subterras came back all the way in Invasion Vengeance. I mean, that was a long time ago, and yes, while I did attend the sneak peek for that, it was still a very long time. There is no way I could actually get the cards up until now. I Had I collected since they actually came out, that would have been fine. But keep in mind, 
The cards were very expensive at the time, you know, even some of the first few Subterra Behemoths were crazy expensive. You had Hidden City, which was a really pricey card as well. It was overall a really pricey deck, and while it was fun to actually kind of toy around with your opponent with the deck itself, it wasn't something that was going to last me long term anyway. So uh, by this point, since I was so far away from finishing it still, there was no point in me actually just keeping the cores or the few cards I actually had, and I decided, you know what, I'll just get rid of them. I even played a small subterra engine within my uh, crawler deck, you know, I played a small subterra engine with my prediction princesses, with my tin dangles, but that's as best as I get, you know, they were just a small engine, but they didn't really do anything as a deck on its own, and Again, flip decks weren't really my major thing, like aside from Shadows really, a lot of flip decks just didn't work out for me, you know, like in the end I realised they just weren't decks that would keep my interest long enough, you know, they, they would eventually fall out and there were so many other decks that I much rather preferred playing because of the fact that they were more combo heavy, whereas flip decks were mostly set and pass. And that's just the basic nature of flip decks in general, you know, they're, they're the way they are. Now moving on here to a lot of these bigger decks, you guys might actually be uh, quite sad to see these go, but firstly I'm going to be getting rid of my Dynamis deck. I profiled this on my channel not too long ago, I think maybe two months ago, but it wasn't a deck that I wanted to really keep going. I mean, at first it did seem fun to actually play the deck, to actually build it, and I had quite a lot of the cards. I mean, I actually did a deck profile on them. But with that being said, I just didn't feel like it was a deck that represented who I was, and I decided, let's get rid of the deck. It's not really doing me any good keeping it, and it was contributing to more of a mess than actually being a deck that I would use for the long run. But of course, we now move on to the next deck here, which is Dino Wrestler. Dino Wrestler, wow, this was definitely quite a difficult decision. You know, Dino Wrestlers, the only reason why I wanted to build it was because it was actually played by Go from Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, and Go also originally played Goki prior to actually him playing Dino Wrestlers, and I just wanted to play it because the character kind of played it, but... Dino Wrestlers was also just not my thing, like it didn't take off as well as Gokis did, you know, Gokis were a deck that at least could maintain my interest, whereas Dino Wrestlers were, I don't know, it just, there's something missing about them, it just doesn't put them up there, but it just made more sense for me to just play pure Dinos, so I still have my pure Dino deck, but to actually have Dino Wrestlers, to be honest, it's not really that fun, it's not really that, well it is fun, it can be fun, but compared to something like pure dinos, it just doesn't hold up, not to mention it felt like in the anime, and yes I kind of do uh, correlate my deck interest based on how they're actually portrayed in the anime, the dino wrestlers were introduced during a time where Go, the particular character from Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns was actually just going through a really huge shifting character that I just didn't like and just having this deck really just made you think about that and because of that I figured you know what I don't really like this deck anyway I prefer Gokis over Dino Wrestlers and uh, I wanted to be more strict with myself with actually getting rid of my decks as a result Dino Wrestlers were a deck that actually uh, had to go for me, you know, so even though I'd done deck profiles for them, uh, it was just something that I decided I'm not going to keep anymore. But finally here we have Tin Dangles. Tin Dangles is the final deck that I'm actually deciding to get rid of for this particular month, uh, for this particular episode that is of Project E, because Tin Dangles, although there's support coming in the future, Again, it's one of those decks that just doesn't live up. It's played by Akira in the Yu-Gi-Oh! of Reigns anime, which he was somewhat of a cool character, but Tindangles was not that kind of deck that took it off for me. It was something that 
while I had some sort of interest to actually build them because they're Dark Fiend monsters with a flip effect gimmick, it just again wasn't something that stood out. It wasn't something that was so overwhelmingly combo heavy. It wasn't something that had a strong presence to their deck and because of that I just decided I'm gonna cut it out as well. So yeah, Tindangles is also going to be leaving now. That will be the last time you guys see any Tindangles on the channel. However, with that being said, that pretty much concludes it for this particular episode of Project E. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, definitely drop a like and also share this video. And don't forget to leave me your thoughts as well. Because with these particular decks that I'm getting rid of, I'm sure some of you guys are now kind of a bit sad that you won't be able to see them anymore on the channel but it's just a decision that I had to make you know I had to be more strict with myself and total decks that we've gotten rid of in total are now 19 decks I'm definitely very happy with the amount of decks that we've actually gotten rid of so far and I hope to get rid of a lot more than that but of course we do have 10 more episodes left to get rid of as many decks as we could possibly do it just seems really nice now because I've decluttered the mess quite a lot and I intend to do so for the next 10 episodes of this particular series. However, with that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll see you all next time.